Do you like to destroy your opponent's hopes of a strong board? Do you like to make your opponent surrender out of frustration? Do you like to make small children cry? We need you to join. Wait, the axis? Off. Oh, Hello everybody and welcome to another Master Duel video. In this one we're taking a look at 8 axis, also known as Blind Second. And Axis in Yu-Gi-Oh! does not refer to a military alliance in the 40s, it refers to the levels that we use on our monsters. For example, if we look at the Fire Fist monsters, they come in the varieties of 3 axis and 4 axis, so it just depends on our level. 8 axis meaning that we use a lot of level 8 monsters. Namely, the Kaijus, Gamma Seal, Gadarla, and Dogoran are all level 8s. Then we run Danger Bigfoot and Danger Thunderbird, also level 8. Kiss Mekorochi, level 8. And Alpha the Master Beast, level 8. And as this is a blind second deck, we run a ton of board breakers. We run Raigeki, we run Dark Hole, we run Lightning Storm, and we run two Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, and sometimes an Ibiru. On top of that, we also run Monster Reborn to be able to steal our opponent's stuff or revive our stuff for extension. Change of Heart, same thing there. Trade in for more draw, same thing with Pot of Desires. And then finally, we have my own little tech in Sales Ban and Numbers Avail. These guys together can put out a Rongo with four materials that does not detach materials at the end of the turn, meaning that for the rest of the game, your opponent can't normal or special summon. And that usually just means the end of that game. So I'll go through quickly the card by card, just talking a little bit about the interesting picks here. The Kaijus, I assume you know this, they allow you to tribute a monster your opponent controls and then replace it with this monster. We run one Dogoran for Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, as this does kind of the same thing. It destroys the entire board and then special summons out two Kaijus from your deck. So we can summon Gamma Seal for our opponent and Dogoran for us giving us at least an 800 attack advantage, which is very good. Gamma Seal, as it is the smallest kaiju, Gadarla, because it's the other level 8. Danger Bigfoot, you can reveal this card and then discard a random card from your hand. If it wasn't Danger Bigfoot that was discarded, we can special summon it out and draw a card. And if it was Danger Bigfoot, and that is specifically the name, not the card itself, you can target one face-up card your opponent controls and destroy it. Danger Thunderbird works very much the same, but instead, when you toss the Thunderbird, you get to destroy a set card. Gizmek Orochi banishes four cards face down from the top of our deck to special summon it, and then it can also do the same thing, but not randomly, from our extra deck and then target a face up monster and destroy it. So we can use this in our opponent's end phase as it is a quick effect and then use its regular effect on the following turn to pop, which is quite good. Nibiru obviously for special summons, Dark Hole, Raigeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, all just board clears. Yeah, and the rest is kind of self-explanatory. Sales Ban allows us to call Rongo and it Limits us from activating his effect, and his active effect is to detach material, so it prevents us from detaching materials. And numbers avail, if our opponent controls a special summon monster from the extra deck and we do not, we can choose four number XYZ's monsters from our extra deck with different ranks, plus a fifth number monster, whose number value in its name equals the combined number values of the four other monsters. Special summon that fifth monster, and treat it as a XZ summon, attach the four materials to it as material, and then we cannot special summon monsters except number XYZ monster while we control that phase of monster. So if our opponent controls a extra deck monster, we have numbers available, we can establish Rongo on the field for one card, with four materials, which is just stupid. But since we already run Zeus, uh, number 77 and number 84 in this deck, we can add the number 5, to go into the Pain Gainer immediately instead of level 7, giving us 2 lower in our total for numbers available, going from the 86 in Heroic Champion Rongo Miniad to number 84 Pain Gainer. We can then stack that on top of a 7 Sins, and then on top of that stack a Zeus for a 6 Material Zeus, which we don't need the Sales Ban for. And Sales Ban can be used to lock cards like Negates on the board or Maxi in their hand and other stuff. It's 
Both are quite useful, uh, versatile cards outside of the Rongo immediate win combo. So, the extra deck. We run F0, he is 4 numbers of L. We run number 100 Numeron Dragon. We can special summon this out with Drag Lubion and OTK immediately. It is one of our strongest win conditions. It's super simple. Two eights on the board make Drag Lubion. Drag Lubion puts out number 100. If it detaches its materials, it gets 9000 attack, meaning it's a simple OTK if we can attack our opponent directly. Rongominiad has a few effects and is one of the most broken cards in the game. It cannot be destroyed by battle, it's a 3000-3000, it's unaffected by other cards effects and our opponent cannot normal or special summon monsters. We never get the fifth effect when we use numbers avail, but it doesn't really matter. Baguska also for numbers avail, if you run the Denko Sekka, you can definitely go into this as well, so it's a consideration. Number 5 to be able to go into Pen Gainer, number 7 for uh, Numbers of L. Number 23, Lancelot. This card can attack our opponent directly while it has Exceed Material and has a mandatory negate on it. So if either player activates a card, it has to detach and negate the activation, so be aware of that. But if we swing in with Lancelot, we can stack Pen Gainer on top of that, 77 on top of that, and then go into a 5 Material Zeus, which is also very good. We can do a similar thing with the Girsu, except we get to send instead of attack directly, which can basically mean the same thing. We have number 38, which is a spell negate. It can also change attacks and boost its attack, but the spell negate is the big thing. If we unfortunately happen to go first, we can go Drag Lubion, and then instead of going into Numeron Dragon, we go into number 38, Hope Harbinger. Other than that, there isn't really much to say. We have Dark in here. I have literally never summoned this card all the way up to gold one, so you could definitely replace this with anything else. I guess it could come up in a mirror where we could steal like a DP or something. I don't know. But yeah, that is the deck list. I'm gonna jump into some combos, um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the grind was, and I'll end with just dumping a ton of replays at you guys, so you guys can see the deck in action. I'll see you soon. It's gonna be the combo guide for 8 axes. Now this deck doesn't really combo. Right here we did open numbers of L and sales band, so if we played against a real opponent and he would have an extra deck monster, we could go sales band, go for Rongo. And then the interesting part is that we could go Master Beast, and then Gizmek, summon these guys, then use numbers available for Rongo, and when Rongo is on the field we can still summon numbers monster, so we can go into a Draglubion, pretend that we have a Rongo right here, so then we just detach one, summon out the big dragon, detach, and would Rongo be here, he would be a 13,000 attack, meaning that we could just swing in an OTK and we would have won the game right there. So that is as simple as the deck gets, really. What we mainly try to do is bait out our opponent's negates so we can establish like a dark hole to clear up their board or whatever, and then establish two eights, go into Numeron Dragon, GG. If we don't think that we can OTK, we can go into Zeus instead by going into Dingirisu, for example, hitting face, 84 Pain Gainer, 77 Zeus. That is also one of the most common lines. But that is as quick and easy as it gets with this deck. Um, it's a really simple one, but still very powerful. I'll give you guys my final thoughts in just a sec. Oh, final thoughts on the 8-axis deck. I think this deck is really fun because we get to just destroy our opponent. Using the Kaijus, we can tribute their big negates, like Baron, for example. Just tribute it away with a Gamma Seal, throw down a Dark Hole, go a Gizmek and a Big Foot, and boom, we won the game. It's that easy. I love it. I highly recommend you guys try it out. I really enjoy it with the sales ban numbers available that has won me a lot of games. But this is a prohibitively expensive deck. It's very, very expensive. Half of our cards in the main deck are yours, even more than half, I think. The extra isn't as expensive, but there's at least 30 of them in here. 
So beware about that. It's an expensive one. But with that, guys, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. Like, comment and subscribe, of course. Uh, hit the bell notification if you want to see more of my videos as they come out. And I'll leave you with some gameplay that I recorded over the course of grinding with this deck. I'll see you guys later. Bye.